Hey guys, I'm Sev, and today we're going to do Clones in a Volume. Yeah, bought it. A few weeks ago, we had a client ask us to create a logo filled with a bunch of magazines. It's a fairly simple setup, although I ran into a few tips that I'd like to share. So we're going to start by creating a cube. Then I'm going to create a cloner. I'm going to stick the cube inside the cloner. Then I'm going to set the cloner to grid array. And I'm going to give myself about 20 clones in every direction. And here's the first tip. Since I'm using the same object cloned multiple times, I'm going to use render instances. Because we're filling up a volume, it's going to take a lot of clones to, to make it feel like that shape. So let's fill up a piece of text. So next we need a volume to fill. So next I'm going to create some text. You're going to need a font that's a little bit thicker. And I'm going to scale this up. And I'm going to go in the, into the cloner. And down at the bottom where it says form, instead of cubic, I'm going to use object. And then I'm going to grab my Motex object and stick it in there. So this is my second tip. As you can see, it's not working. Even if we hide this, it's still not working. I'm not sure why, but the Motex object doesn't work. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to do it the longer way. And I'm going to create a spline text object. I'll do the same exact thing. Use the same font even. And then I'm going to create an extrude object. And I'm going to scale it up. And I'm going to scale it up. So now I'm going to grab the cloner again. I'm going to drop the extrude in there. You can already see that it's working, although our clones are way too big. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to just make these clones funny. And there you go. You can see that there's it's filling the W. We're going to need many more clones. And this is why you have to use render instances because it is so slow because of because you're filling the volume. It takes a lot of clones to fill the volume. Now we don't need as many in the z-axis, so I'm just going to go to six. Next, I'm going to hide this extrude, and we're just going to add some more clones and make it so that we can actually see what's going on. So let's go to 30, maybe. That's already looking a lot better. And there you go. That's the basic setup. So let me take you to the animation that I created. So I created this the same way. Created an extrude object with some text in it, a cloner, and a grid array. And then I put the extrude in the object tab for the form. So texture mapping this is relatively simple, although there is one gotcha if you need to have this sequentially. I built a regular shader in texture. I went down to MoGraph Multishader. And then in the multi-shader, I just had a folder with sequential images and I just went and added folder and it just automatically adds each image sequentially. So in our case, this is tutorial one and that's image one. In the multi-shader, there are a couple of settings up here at the top where it says mode. If you're doing a linear clone, index ratio works great because it gives you one through 10 or one through whatever number you have, and it works sequentially perfectly. But when you're doing it in a volume like this, you're going to have numbers. One could be out here off the volume. So if you need it to do a cross, you're probably going to have to build each number separately. In our case, we wanted to randomly distribute the images across the face of the face of the object. So what I did was I grabbed a random effector, turned off all its parameters and turned on color. And then in the effector, I just made sure that it's the topmost effector. So the random gives you a random value between black and white on every single clone. And the shader set to color brightness will automatically distribute an image per the different levels of gray. And you can actually see here, I render this out. It's randomly dropping the images across the faces. Now, if you wanted to do these sequentially, it becomes a little more complicated. For that, let me show you a different setup. So in this setup, I have a grid array and I know that I have 118 images. So I'm splitting it into two rows. So I'm doing 59 by two. It should sequentially give you the 118 images. If you take the 118 images, it's not gonna do anything because I don't have a color value on these. So then you add a step effector and set that to color, turn off everything else, and then make sure that you're zero to 100. And you can see that I'm sequentially distributing across this grid. But in our case, didn't really need to do that. So let me show you how I animated this. It's really simple. I animated it with a plane effector inside of a null. I took the plane effector and I rotated it slightly down so that you can get a little bit of extra separation between the clones. If I was straight on, you wouldn't get hardly any separation between the clones as it animated through. And then I stuck that in to have a null. I could just do a simple animation and I can adjust the plane effector if I need to. And then on top of that, I added a delay effector set to blend, affecting the position and rotation. And that's just to even out the animation so that it's nice and smooth. Well, that's about it. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, go to patreon.com forward slash workbench 
and follow the blog at workbench.tv. I'm Sev, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>